Welcome and thank you for coming to this presentation on the positive impact of games on the perception of space exploration. This year I'm 44, but in the 1980s I was a kid who watched anything that Disney could send behind the Iron Curtain. I grew up in Poland watching the stories that Walt Disney and Willem von Braun were spinning since the 1950s. What an amazing ride it must have been to listen to them more than 70 years ago in the USA. Probably, like many of you, I grew up on science fiction literature. For me it was Stanisław Lem and the Strugatsky brothers, but of course there were so many more authors who took us on voyages among the stars. With passing years, the cinema was catching up with splendid visions of what's possible, what's troubling, and what's a pure space opera. And the wish for space travel kept on growing. If you check what we can watch today, it's difficult to stay afloat. There are so many films and TV series, not to mention anime, that have been produced over the last 50 years. Everyone has their favourites. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. The invention of the cinema made sure that we all went to space with vigour. So, whether you are an avid reader or a moviegoer, or you follow everything that science channels and publications could deliver, we all came to the same place. We want to explore the solar system, and we believe we know how. Well, it so happens that we not only know how, some of us have already done it numerous times. While playing games, we suspend our disbelief and we become fully engrossed in the presented worlds. While playing games, the feeling is real, we are colonizing Mars. Games are the new theatrical spectacle of the third millennium. They bring the catharsis the real explorers may go through. And to count the games we already played while traveling to and around Mars, there are dozens. Whether you are into space sims, strategy games, serious games, role-playing games or simple shooters, we've been to the Red Planet. However, in the last 10 years, reaching out to other worlds has become even easier than before. Mobile phones are powerful calculating machines and gaming consoles. Whether for entertainment or work, they can and do wonders. And again, this is just a glimpse at what technology can do. With VR games for portable devices and gaming consoles, you can spend hundreds of hours experiencing Mars as if you were really there. So, what would you like to do on Mars? Repair machinery? Build stations? Conduct experiments? Fend off intruders or aliens? It's your pick, as those games are already waiting for you. Just add them to your cart. And again, we didn't even start talking about proper simulations of rocket building, space travel, psychological tensions in long-haul voyages, or building whole settlements and civilizations on other planets. One of the games I played last month is Mars Horizon. I heartily recommend it both as a game and as an introduction to solar system exploration. In Mars Horizon, you are going to be exposed to all kinds of missions, from preparing simple satellites to Mars landers. 
you will experience firsthand the feeling of losing a probe after six or so years of travel. The game brings on a tremendous understanding of planning and of time it requires to do anything on solar system scale. One more lesson you will learn on higher levels of difficulty is that going solo is not the way. Cooperate, exchange and spread research and make humanity thrive. It's team effort that will allow you to succeed in reaching Mars or Neptune. But remember, it's just a game. Well, it so happens it's a good one. One more element of Mars Horizon I like is the understanding of public support. Your numbers, income, thrust and weight can be all correct, but without recognition and support it's difficult to progress and reach your full potential. However, my main concern are not video games, but board games and card games. Why? Because you play most of them with other people, as a team or as competitors, because players enrich them with their own intentions and imagination. And if we don't want to concentrate on Mars alone, but more generally speaking on space travel and exploration, the amount of those tabletop games grows exponentially. To show you just a few examples of how much detail, research and thought has been given to those games, have a look at those examples. This is the map from High Frontier for All. It's a game designed by a real rocket scientist and it may boast one of the most accurate representations of solar system, with various trajectories, slingshot possibilities, planets, moons, asteroids, you name it. First Martians is probably one of my personal favourites, because I played it with my friend Dushan. We were left on Mars in a broken habitat, and we fought for survival. Moxie was working, but food was scarce, and when generators failed... You want to know what it will feel like to be on Mars in those early stages? Try going through a few missions in First Martians. Or maybe you are more interested in the interplay between the production of food, oxygen and water, while mining for resources and trading with Earth? Martians, a story of civilization is waiting. Just work with the manual and guidelines prepared by fans. The original instruction is as baffling as decelerating your probe during the atmospheric entry. But probably the best known of them all is Terraforming Mars, and there is a good reason for it. It's a game of calculated risk and chances, of economy and of interaction with others. And all that with a fair amount of real examples of technologies we will need while settling on the Red Planet. The game can play for a few hours, especially if you add expansions and other celestial bodies, but that's exactly where such games shine. For a few hours you're developing settlements and you're terraforming Mars with other players. The experience is quite uncanny. However, if you don't have up to five hours to spare, Try the card game version of Terraforming Mars. The technologies mentioned and presented are probably even more aligned with what we already know about sustaining life on Mars. Just have a look at the 200 cards. Each of them presents a specific solution or technology. Those games don't exist somewhere in vacuum or on store shelves. 
they have massive communities of supporters and followers. There are hundreds of thousands of people who explore solar systems and colonize Mars on a daily basis. Well, is it really hundreds of thousands of players? Is there really any substantial group of people? Are there any tangible effects to discuss? Let me make a simple comparison between the size of music industry, film industry and video games. Well, video games could eat the other two contenders for breakfast and still feel wanting. It seems that online games alone collect more income than all songs, all films and all sports events you can think of. Even board games alone are of similar size to the music industry. The development of technologies, computers, gaming consoles, software, the internet and so on made the gaming industry one of the most progressive in the last 20 years. But even if we limit ourselves to board games alone, there are around 5,000 new titles and expansions produced every year. Even if only 1% of them deals with space exploration, you would get a new decent game every week. Despite the pandemic, the game industry continued to grow. Well, people didn't have much to do, so what was there? Music, films and games. Some branches of game industry grew by 200% in the last two years. But what is of greater importance for us is the quality and character of games we are discussing here. Mars-related games are not competitive winner-takes-all monopoly games. They offer various levels of difficulty with multiple modes of play from solo through cooperative to semi-competitive. They're getting more in tune with the way we work on large projects. We need supportive teams. OK, so there are some cool games out there. So what? Well, I'm happy that you asked. We are not in a void. There are hundreds of games that relate to Mars and space exploration. They have avid followers. There are means of production and distribution in play. There are information channels and worldwide conventions. There is a whole world out there that is simply waiting for more contact. There are nerds, there are geeks, there are people who are into space exploration. So that's what I can see could be happening for mutual benefit. Discussions about games should become part of the Mars Society mission. We should take active part in the promotion of games because this means the promotion of space exploration. We could be incorporating fun with simulations, serious games and science here. Just like Mensa awards games that have positive impact on learning and on developing cognitive skills, so should major plays in space exploration do. That's one of reasons why parents and players buy games. There is positive feedback from people who know this stuff. And remember that there are new games produced every day. Just today, while finishing this presentation, I found out that there is a new card game that puts you in a seat of a CEO who's recruiting engineers as you attempt to succeed in building rockets worthy of interplanetary travel.
There are hundreds of such games waiting for recognition and inclusion in our march towards Mars. To be honest, there are people reaching and colonizing Mars on a daily basis, so let's do it together! Thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope I managed to convince you that games can and do have a positive impact on the perception of space exploration. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat, I promise to answer, or write an email to me. Thank you one more time and I hope to see you around when we reach and colonize Mars, whether in one of those games or for real in time.